Good morning. Good morning to all of you. Thank you for accepting our invitation. This is the Bonaire Plastic Free Session. We're going to start with a video and then we'll continue with our speakers. This nomadic species is often observed to be at picnics during birthdays and even beach parties. However, their dramatic ritual often unfolds in the hottest part of the garden, right by the barbecue. This highly available group of seducers knows when to spread out their versatile display to convince you to use them. But barely is the get-together over, and suddenly they are good for nothing, and off they run to pollute the ocean, maybe to be eaten by the fish that one day will be on your dinner plate. Help protect our beaches and oceans. Don't be let down by single-use plastic cutlery. Start a long-term relationship with a smarter alternative. There are cutlery designs today available in wood, bamboo, long-lasting plastic, and metal. Welcome. Thank you for accepting our invitation. My name is Sena Cecilia. I will be your MC moderator for the day. I will also have a different role later on, but I'll tell you later on about that one. First of all, first of all we're going to start with waarom is het belangrijk? Why is it important to ban plastic, single-use plastic? And that I will elaborate on. Later on, we have Sharon Ball, with, which we'll talk a little bit about how it started, how we came about what we're doing today, and all the information and the research part of it beforehand that was done since 2018. So this is not a short process. This has been going on for a while. And then Eva van Voskuilen, a beleidsadviseur from OLB, will elaborate on it ban itself. She will have all the necessary information, how we came about the ban, all the ins and outs of the ban, and all you need to know about this new rule. Then we'll have a five minute break. Then we'll have a Q&A. So all your questions, concerns, remarks that you have about the single use plastic ban, we can later on answer all your questions. So without further ado, I'm gonna explain a little bit how we're gonna go with the Q&A. You have a WhatsApp, which is 770-6948. Save that number, send us your questions, your remarks, and then we can show that on screen, talk about it, we can have all the conversation that we need to have, and maybe lessen your concerns about this ban. So we're talking about a single-use plastic ban. A lot of times you see so many efforts being done about cleanups, coastal cleanups, dive cleanups, and you see that all these efforts is a continuous effort, but not a lot is being done. And we wonder, what can you do in order to really make a dent? And that is stop using plastic, especially single-use plastic. If you look at our landfills, you see that it's so full, you know, and our community is growing. You know, a lot of people on Bonaire. What do we do? Grow our landfills, make it a larger place, make more plastic. The thing that has been shown to really work is stop using plastic. Just, just stop. And it's easy to say. It's easier said than done. It's many years of using straws and it's easy, it's affordable, it's there. You know, if one person says, you know, it's just one straw, it means it's 20,000 people saying it's just one straw. And then you say that every day. And where do these straws end up? in our landfills, in our sea, our beautiful sea. You wonder why I'm telling you about nature? Well, I am also, that's a different part of me, I'm also the communications officer and spokesperson for SINAPA. So that's what we do all day. We take care of our nature, especially two major national parks on the island, one of them being our marine park. And we see it every day. We see it in our sea. Every time we go on patrol, we see plastic. Every time we help a lot of our stakeholders with the cleanups and they get so much plastic out of our beautiful sea. And they do it every week. And every week it's an enormous amount of plastic. And we wonder, is this the solution? 
cleaning up after everybody every week or just saying, you know what, it's best if we don't use plastic at all. So very important today is informing about the role that we have on, as an island, as a community, to save what we have, what we currently have and love, which is our nature for the future generations. A lot of times when you find dead animals, fishes that wash ashore, larger animals like sharks and whales and turtles, which we all love to see when we snorkel. We find plastics. Either they have it in their stomachs or they have it, they're entangled in it. They were strangled by it. So I don't think that's very wise of us to be continue to use this plastic, looking at all that it, the damage that they do. And that's just the plastic that we see. We didn't even start about the microplastics. That's what you don't even see. And that ends up in our stomachs, in our environment. And it has not been proving all the bad effects that it has on our health. So there's a lot of things negative that I can say on plastic and the use of single-use plastic. However, today I want to focus on the positive part of it. We're doing something. We're actually making a difference. I'm not gonna go into details about the difference that we'll make, but one thing for sure is that I support this. And I support it being the difference that needs to be made for our future. And for all the generations after us, because if we look at the lifespan of a single-use plastic product that can be up to 450 years, you know, beginning of the industrial revolution, they produced the plastic, I wasn't even there, but still, I have to deal with the consequences of it all. So I do not want that for the future generations. So that's why I'm part of the difference. I will have the experts that have been through the beginning of it all, do, done the research, know the information, understand it, explain further on what and why we should ban the single-use plastic on our lovely island Bonaire. So thank you. I will pass the word now to Sharon Ball, she will elaborate more on how we came about this, all the research that was done, all of that information. Good morning, everyone, and thank you, Sena, for that lovely introduction. Uh, most of you know me. I work for uh, Bonaire Duradero, which was sponsored by the Worldwide Fund for Nature in the Netherlands for years. And as such, I've been involved in many cleanups and uh, done many activities for youth as well to keep our island clean. But as Sena already pointed out, we need to switch to prevention. And that's why I was, in 2018, I was very happy to learn that our government is interested in uh, reduction of plastics because they already accepted a, a, a motion to ban plastics in 2018. Um, it always takes a while to uh, come from a wish to an actual law. Uh, but we were helped by the Dutch government because they made monies available in July of 2019 and uh, signed a declaration of intent together with James Krohn. So that was a very good start. And then in September of 2019, I approached the uh, OLB because I thought it was very important to involve local stakeholders and hear about them. What do I, what do I think about plastic reduction? What are they busy with? And during that conversation with importers of plastic, but also supermarkets, Celibon was there. We heard that many people already are uh, researching what kind of sustainable alternatives there are for the use of plastic. And um, we came to a good understanding of which items we could phase out first, because you can't ban everything at once. So the consensus was that we would start with plastic bags, stirrers, straws, cutlery, and styrofoam. Styrofoam is the worst because it fragments into so many small pieces. And uh, the, one of the other parts that uh, we learned during that meeting is that a lot of businesses, uh, people who sell snacks or people who sell meals are really willing to invest in more sustainable packaging. But sometimes they're not aware 
of where, what actually is sustainable. So I'll come back to that later. Back to the timeline. So after the, the stakeholder meeting, we took some of that information. One of it was, uh, let's have more awareness for the local public. So we had a collaboration in December of 2020 with OL Bay to start with posters. So we handed out posters to local businesses. We started an, a sushi of douche campaign. So do you want our island to be clean and douche or do you want it to be sushi? And in uh, January of 21, we then saw that kind of other islands were taking uh, steps towards a ban. So Seba implemented that plan, plan in the, their plan for a ban in 21, January. And then in April, Stacia also accepted a ban. Um, so that was also kind of like a, a, a force for us to, to say, like, when are we going to start? So. Uh, I know that uh, the policy advisor, Eva van Voskal, who's going to speak later, was really adamant about, you know, getting this ban done because it's so important for Bonaire. Then in March of 2021, we had a soft launch for Beyond Plastics, an e-learning program that I developed. I will talk about it later on. And then all our efforts, our combined efforts worked and paid off in October of 2021. Uh, the ban was finally accepted by uh, the government of Bonaire. So that was a really good step forward. Like I pointed out before, uh, sometimes there's misleading information about plastics. And a lot of our uh, local snacks and uh, restaurants, they switch to bioplastics with the, intention, with the intention to do good and with the idea that bio plastics really degrade into nature. But if you look at the research, bioplastics really have the same properties as normal plastics. And that is because sometimes chemicals are added to the bioplastics and yeah, then they don't break down in nature, they don't break down in sea and they need industrial processing. At the same time, when you think about recycling, Bioplastics can't be recycled in the same stream as conventional plastics. So that adds another problem to the, uh, to the big pile of plastic problems that there are already. So when you look at processing bioplastics, Bonaire doesn't really have an infrastructure. So you need special machines to process this type of plastic, but you also need to separate to collect it separately from the normal plastics. So that's also a really big investment if we would want to go there. Um, but if you go a step further again, you see that there are really no good ways to recycle bioplastics. It hasn't been invented yet. So that brings us to maybe stopping with throwaway pr products. Because even though bioplastics are maybe in the, the mind of a lot of people less harmful than regular plastics, it's still a throwaway pl product. And I think if we look into the future, I hope in 10 years, we will have switched to reusables because that was actually the old way and some of us are finding out that the old ways are, were actually very much more sustainable than our new ways. So reusing products leads to less waste and as, as Zena just explained our landfill is full, it is reaching full capacity, it has been for years. So it is up to us as a community to make the change. It's not just up to importers of uh, packaging but it's actually up to all of us to, you know, do our part. And doing our part can happen in different ways. We can communicate better with the audience and we can find ways to, you know, uh, chip in. If, communication is always expensive, but today's social media makes it much less expensive. It only needs all of us coming together and having the same goal to work towards. Innovation is another part. It can help. 
in India, for example, they have started using just banana leaf as packaging without any chemicals added. And that's really a nature product that if you use leaves, they can just, you know, go back into composting. And the other part of collaboration is that, and I've looked at this with um, other companies on Bonaire before, is how can you combine buying power? Because we also know that sustainable is often more expensive than regular. I mean, a styrofoam box is 17 cents and uh, a sustainable box is maybe triple that price. So, yeah, it is more expensive to be sustainable. But again, if we switch to reusable and inform our customers, our buyers, that maybe when you go to the snack, you take your own Tupperware container and you get your Stoba in your own container. That wouldn't be bad. So I think there's a lot to be won if we can collaborate on these issues of communication, innovation, and buying power. Because everybody, everybody knows that transportation costs are high. We have supply chain issues, which makes costs even higher. But if we work together, I'm pretty sure we can make a difference. Uh, talking about making a difference, um, as a last project for working for WWF, I developed a Beyond Plastics e-learning module. And it's really a step-by-step -step program, very easy. It has a voiceover in Papiamento, so you can you know, click a voice button and learn about the harmful impacts of single-use plastics. And I would really urge everyone on Bonaire not just if you work in the tourist industry or if you work in a supermarket, but everyone on Bonaire should learn about how we can all do our part in plastic reduction, because it's up to all of us. Uh, well, thank you for your time. Uh, I hope you will stay on for the questions. And now I would like to invite Eva van Voskale, policy advisor of OLB. Uh, thank you, Sharon, for your uh, kind words. Um, as Sharon mentioned, it really was a shared practice, uh, a shared effort uh, coming to, to this ban. All your input as stakeholders, our research, but also our collaboration uh, made this ban possible. Um, and what we have today is what we call, uh, what I like to call the first phase of the ban, because I hope it doesn't stop here. Uh, we uh, chose, as Sharon already mentioned, to start with five products, the t-shirt plastic bags, the straws, the stirrers, the cutlery, and the foam uh, meal packaging. Um, I want to kind of re briefly recap on the definition of disposable plastic. It's a two-part definition. I want to emphasize that we mean all types of plastic. So not only conventional plastic, but also oxo-degradable, uh, oxo uh, bioplastics and foam packaging because they all have uh, two things in common they mostly almost always need uh, industrial processing and they break down into microplastics when left in uh, nature as mentioned before and then the definition of disposable is important as well because they um, it contains products, it pertains to products that are really manufactured for one-time use. So uh, the ban starts June 1st of this year, which is in four months, uh, for four of the five uh, products. And then per August 1st, uh, it will start for foam meal packaging. We chose for this exception, for this later date for meal packaging, as we have a very large takeout culture. Uh, and we want uh, sellers of the products to really um, uh, have the chance to get rid of their inventory first. Um, so shortly, how was this choice made? Uh, simply put, we looked at, uh, does it have medical purposes, uh, hygiene purposes, or uh, food security? Um, if the products do have one of these purposes, then uh, it's not uh, suitable for a ban. Um, 
Furthermore, they really need to have a good or a sustainable alternative. Can you reduce your use of them? Do you really need them? Or is there a sustainable alternative um, to reuse, uh, for example, reusable products? Um, we developed a campaign. We developed uh, symbols uh, to help communicate this ban uh, in the coming years. You can see them on the screen. Um, you can see it's for t-shirt plastic bags, cutlery, stirs, um, straws, foam packaging. And we added an extra symbol, a symbol for bioplastics, to really emphasize that this is also a type of plastic. And you cannot just dispose of them in nature. Um, we're happy to see that a lot of people in the market have already um, transferred to different types of products. For example, Luciano's, I recently noticed, got rid of the plastic spoons they use for the ice cream, and they yet now use the wooden spoons for their customers. And for example, also the donor station I recently noticed doesn't use the biodegradable bags anymore, but really the uh, um, uh, paper bags. So, and of course, many, many other um, uh, sellers of disposable plastic have switched a long time ago. I know a lot of, uh, almost all retailers actually stopped using or selling um, the di disposable plastic bags. So we're really grateful for that. And we um, see the change in the community already. So to briefly touch upon uh, enforcement because I'm not the expert in this field. For this, we have uh, Wesley of our Department of Enforcement and he will answer any questions you may have in the, in the next half hour after the break. But to briefly touch upon it is we added an extra chapter to the um, waste directive that was already in place. Um, this chapter solely focuses on single-use plastic, but to enforce uh, articles 32, 33, and 34 of um, the directive that was already in place um, are applicable to any offense. If there is an offense, it really, uh, the consequences really depend on um, the severity of the offense, and it can range from a warning and a, a, a chance to redeem yourself, or even, in worst cases, two months custody in jail. Um, thank you for your uh, attention. I will now start a video um, that was developed by Bonaire Duradero. Um, and we would like to invite you all to join the movement. When they're gone. 